This episode of the Astro Powder Podcast is brought to you by Gama. Are you looking for a solution to coat your most difficult products with no touch-up? Then Gama's dynamic contouring equipment is the right solution for you. Unlike robotic coating, dynamic contouring offers greater flexibility without all the programming hassle, while correctly positioning each powder gun to automatically coat your parts. For more information, call 877-437-6771. Once again, that's 877-437-6771. And be sure to mention, Ask Joe sent me. Automate it. Position it. Detect it. Code it. Complete it with Gamma. Hello all you powder coating fans and welcome to episode 37 of the Ask Joe Powder podcast. I'm your host, Joe Powder, aka Kevin Biller. And with me, as usual, is my colleague, sidekick, and the Spiro Agnew of CQPCR, Nathan. He's ChemQuest Powder Coating Research's formulator dude. Estamos transmitiendo desde los estudios de investigación de pintura en polvo de ChemQuest en Columbus, Ohio. Para que lo sepas, el propósito del podcast de preguntar José Polvo es brindar noticias y conocimientos técnicos a la comunidad mundial de pintura en polvo. Empecemos. Ah, but before we do, I'd like to give a hearty shout out to... Shout out! The cool folks at Key Finishes. I'm talking about the clever lads, Robert Johnson, Todd Powers, and Jim McCurdy. These guys started Key Finishes about 12 years ago, and they're, they've been just very successful entrepreneurs. They operate a high-quality business, uh, which provides a bonding service for powder coatings. Uh, if you're not familiar with bonding, it's a process where metallic and effect pigments, such as uh, pearlescence or micas, are blended with a base powder coating to give a, a high-performance metallic coating. Now, these guys, uh, I've known them since the 1980s, and they're, they're just great, great people. They do a great job. They're located in Columbus, Ohio, just a couple miles from our studio. And uh, if ever you need powder coating bonded, um, you might want to give these guys a holler. That's key finishes. Okay, folks, it's time now for our Guess What segment. Guess what? All right, the first one comes from Progress in Organic Coatings. And uh, this is a project out of the Leibniz Institute for Polymer Science in Dresden and the Technical University of Dresden. It's pretty interesting. They came up with a self-stratifying coating based on silicone and epoxy blends. They report it as an easy to use, eco friendly, and industrial favorable procedure. Yeah, this one, Nate. Their their concept basically is the the, the silicone rises, whereas the epoxy descends the the coating film from a cross sectional standpoint, and the epoxy gives good or excellent corrosion resistance, and the silicone provides outdoor durability and and other kind of resistance properties yeah it's a cool system if it's you know you basically treat it as one material you spray it onto a part and then you have you know the properties of both a epoxy and a silicone there's been plenty of times people have tried the dry on dry for instance where you spray a base coat like an epoxy primer and then something that's weatherable on top and then try to melt and cure them together and it seems like a really interesting approach to doing that same kind of yeah, and I, I, you know, I'd say hats off to these people. They're they're obviously researchers, you know, not not you know, product development people with a specific customer in mind. But you know, sounds like a great idea, and that's something to be uh, kind of checked out. All right, and our next item comes from PCI Magazine, and they report 
Sherwin Williams breaks ground on a new global R and D center in good old Brexville, Ohio. They'll bring chemists, engineers, technicians, and support teams together to a state of the art hub for innovation and development. It'll support product development, coatings research, color technology, and process engineering, which we've actually had a few of these reports come out lately. We've got some of the real big companies and the medium sized ones really in, investing in, you know, these big R and D facilities and pushing new technology. Yeah. One of the cool things about this one, Nate, the, uh, you know, Sharon Williams has been in, in Cleveland, uh, Cleveland area for over a hundred years. And, you know, they've stuck to, you know, supporting the community and building their, their business and, and their, their headquarters. Uh, they also have a, um, uh, a new global headquarters in downtown Cleveland, which is, you know, probably about eight or 10 miles from Brexville. And yeah, the, the hats off to these, uh, these guys. It's a big company. Of course, they've got, you know, thousands of employees, but you know, um, I think it's a good thing for them. It's a good thing for Cleveland. Okay, friends. Now it's time for our question and answer portion of our podcast. Do you have a question? Ask Joe Powder. Well, you can ask him. Ask Joe Powder. He has the answer. That old answer. Powder Cody. It's the Ask Joe Powder podcast. Okay, this first one comes from Oslem in New York. Oslem says, hello, Joe. My question to you will be related to bonding today. I'm afraid I'm not able to understand fully the process. Firstly, can we only bond metals to premix substances? Secondly, how do we define bonding temperature? Is that T sub G or glass transition temperature of the bonded materials? And thirdly, if I'm not mistaken, the reason why we bond is to bring the metallic pigments to the surface. How can we determine the bonding conversion? Is there any analytic way to measure that? Okay, Aslan. Th- thanks for your question, and and um, yeah, this is kind of timely that we gave a shout out to our bonding friends at Key Finishes. So let's talk about bonding. The main purpose of bonding is to physically adhere your effect pigments, which are typically aluminum or aluminium, and and pearlescent or mica particles, to the powder coating particles. Reason to do this is it improves the electrostatic application consistency and the handling properties of your your finished powder coating as well. If you have just blended powder with aluminum flakes and and maybe other effect pigments, you tend to get segregation during all the application processes, which would include, you know, handling transport um, of the of the powder material from the from the container to the fluidized bed, the fluidization, transport through the hoses, through the guns, and, and very importantly, you'll get segregation in uh, the overspray. And if there's any kind of reclaim involved, your reclaim is going to look significantly different than your than your um, your virgin or original material. So with bonding, the goal is to agitate or, or, or blend your base powder coating to the point of softening. Do this typically with a high-intensity mixer and just the mechanical mixing of the powder material transfers mechanical energy into heat, which the key here is to reach the softening point, not the melting point of the powder particles. When you When you approach that temperature, you then introduce the flakes to the mixer, and you mix it up a little bit longer. And if you do everything correctly, the flakes adhere or fuse to the surface of the powder particles. And then at that point, you very quickly evacuate the mixer of your blended bonded powder to do a couple of things. One, to start cooling it so the, the heat doesn't keep accumulating. And also to minimize agglomeration. And that usually involves some type of screening process. I'm most familiar with a flat deck screener for this part of the process. And yes, TG is obviously very important. You know, TG or glass transition temperature refers to, it's kind of a fancy way to measure your softening point. But 
it's got to you. You got to take into account more than just the resin T sub G, which would be an obvious thing, but the overall T sub G of the binder, which can be affected by additives such as waxes and flow agents, and also cross linkers. So, the other thing I want to tell you is bonding is a, is as much an art as it is a science. Therefore, it's a fun challenge. And as for an analytical technique to assess degree of bonding. I think the bonding people know some ways of doing this. And indeed, some of the equipment people claim they have uh, techniques uh, to measure degree of bonding. Um, I don't think I'm giving away too much here, but I I do think they use um, <clears throat> fluidized bed testing. If, if the bonding is incomplete, then the material segregate mm-hmm. um, in a fluidized bed setting. Okay. Um, it's not exactly analytical, but it's one of those empirical ways that you can. A little bit subjective, but yeah, <clears throat> that makes perfect sense. So, anyway, thank you for your question, Oslam, and uh, wish you the best, Joe Powder. And now, a word from our sponsors. Gamma's Optiflex Pro Manual Gun uses Power Boost technology, which gives you the industry's highest charging power at 110,000 volts and 110 microamps, allowing for faster and more efficient powder coating. We're handing you more power, more quality, and more control. For a demonstration, call 877-437-6771. Once again, that's 877-437-6771. And be sure to mention, Ask Joe sent me. When you want to know that everything is covered, complete it with GEMA. The Powder Coating Research Group is now part of the ChemQuest Group, proud sponsor of the Ask Joe Powder podcast. ChemQuest Powder Coating Research is the only independent laboratory dedicated to powder coating technology. We do everything from evaluating raw materials, formulating the next generation of coating, developing new products, consulting, testing, troubleshooting, and training. Our parent company, ChemQuest, provides expert business strategy and advisory services in all aspects of the specialty chemicals value chain, including expertise in both liquid and powder coating. To find out more, visit our website at powdercoatingresearch.com or ChemQuest's website at www.chemquest.com. You can email Kevin Biller at kbiller at chemquest.com. Thanks for listening to the Ask Joe Powder Podcast. Welcome back. And our next our next question comes from Dion. And Dion says, Dear Joe, we're in the process of establishing an assembly plant here in South Africa. One of the topics on my agenda is the question regarding the following. Can an e-coated vehicle shell or body be shipped overseas and painted at the destination? If so, what would the processes be to implement something like this, i.e. a paint shop? Kind regards. Well, Dion, this is a great question, and um, absolutely, it's quite feasible. In fact, I think it's a very good idea. I think the idea of, like, uh, automotive body or, or any kind of other body to, like, maybe a transport or a you know farm implement or, or any of those types of related industries, um, it's a really good idea if you've got, you know, steel as your substrate to first clean electric coat it, and, yeah, provide that as your base or your primer. So if you're going to do this at at multiple locations, it would be essential to clean that surface that's going to be powder-coated, you know, this the electric-coated surface. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems with dirt, film defects. You may even run into problems with even film formation if there's wax or oil on the surface. Fingerprints will do that as well. So here's what I'd recommend. Uh, you need to clean the surface to remove any of these kind of environmental or incidental soils that could be deposited during transit and handling. You could do this a couple of different ways. One would be a simple alkaline cleaner like you would have in any pretreatment system. You know, slightly elevated temperature, aqueous alkaline, 
followed by a couple of rinses, maybe a, a tap water rinse, followed by a, a clean water or deionized water rinse. That should probably work. Now, if it's a smaller scale type process, you may want to just consider using uh, a mild solvent, you know, wipe it down with clean rags, and this could be an alcohol. I would recommend alcohol. You know, isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirits, which, uh, depending on which part of the world you're, you come from, that's also known as denatured alcohol. So anyway, I think it's a good idea, and I you know, wish you well with um, pursuing this process. And please let me know if, if I can be of further assistance, Dion. Best regards, Joe. Okay, we have another question from Rahul in India. He says, hi, sir, how are you? I need your help. What type of chemistry should one use for below zero temperatures? For instance, negative uh, 30 C up to zero C. Should I go with pure polyester or hybrid? Would a super durable polyester work? Or should I go for some higher percentage of resin, around 80%? Please reply when you get the time. Thank you. All right, Rahul. Um, thanks for your question. And yeah, this is a good one. Um, not all powder coatings are are exposed to really low temperatures. And this one sounds like it, it will be. You didn't mention exactly what the application is, but we're going to go with uh, something that's going to behave well at these low temperatures. You you mentioned polyester versus hybrid, and a hybrid for our, our new uh, listeners is a combination of epoxy resin with a polyester. You, you mentioned the traditional pure polyester or this, this hybrid type of um, material. I would recommend starting with a 50-50 a hybrid, which would be equal parts epoxy and polyester resin with a, a minimal amount of filler, maybe uh, around 10% by weight of something like a wallastonite or pre perhaps even a mica, which should give you a little bit of um, kind of physical structural integrity between the uh, the binder matrix. So that's one thing I do. This 50-50 polyester uh, to epoxy hybrid will provide excellent toughness, adhesion, and it should give you the thermal stability that you're looking for, and this would be a relatively low formulation cost. Um, I'd be careful not to incorporate too high a concentration of filler because you'll get to a certain point where you'll start to compromise your, your flexibility or ductility, toughness, and, and possibly your corrosion resistance. So that's where I would start. One last thing, you know, would this be a gloss or a semi-gloss or a matte type finish? Uh, please let me know. All right, and we did get a follow-up question from Rahul. He says, sir, it is a glossy and semi-glossy. Could I not use a super durable polyester? I want to request to you about some literature which relates to powder coating formulation, which will help to get me help in resin and filler selection. Thank you. Okay, Rahul. Um, I still think the 50-50 hybrid makes the most sense. Um, and it can be formulated quite easily in a high gloss or semi gloss type um, platform. And I, I truly believe it's going to give you the best flexibility and toughness uh, at a reasonable raw material price. Uh, you mentioned super durable polyesters, which super durable polyesters provide excellent resistance to sunlight and intense UV radiation. They're usually pretty bad, uh, pretty, pretty substandard for flexibility. And if you're looking mm -hmm. for flexibility, especially at low temperatures, I think uh, the super durable polyesters are going to be quite brittle. So I'd stick with the, the hybrid, um, and I think you'll get good results. Now, as far as finding some literature on powder coating formulation, well, that's kind of up our alley, Rahul. <laughs> I did publish in 2004 uh, a formulator's guide called Powder Coatings Foundation for the Novice Formulator. Um, I think I was getting paid by the word with the title. But anyway, um, uh, if you send me your email address, I'll send you a copy of that. 
at no charge because it's out of print. Uh, I'd be happy to help you with that. The other thing you can do is um, <laughs> if ever you're in Columbus, we, we hold a formulators course uh, about three or four times a year, and that's a good place to learn. Best regards, Joe. Okay, everyone, before we go, we're going to fill you in on some upcoming events. Hey, friends, where are we going? To an upcoming event. Okay, um, most of these are going to be 2022. The show season for 21 is wrapping up. I know China Coat, that got canceled. We had that on our previous episode. Like They canceled right <laughs> But at the same time that we were releasing the episode. Yeah, but, they, they took that down to the wire. It had been tough on people that had travel plans. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, in 2022, in March the 7th through 9th, it's Powder Coating Week. That's the Powder Coating Institute's week-long event with powder coatings and related technologies. Yeah, they, they marry that up with um, – with the CCAI. Yeah, the Chemical Coders Association International, which is a liquid paint kind of local kind of well, it's 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 international, but it's a, a United States based um organization. So they they overlap those kind of make it a week that way. Right. And then uh the 17th through 19th of March is paint in Istanbul and Turk coat 2022 in Istanbul, Turkey. The 5th through 7th of April 2022 is the American Coding Show and Conference, which uh, we'll have a booth there. So, you know, if you want to come by and ask Joe Powder. Yeah, maybe afterwards, you know, we'll buy you a beer or maybe we take. Or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, we'll take turns buying each other beers. May 4th through 6th. 2022 is Coatings for Africa at the Santon Convention Center in Johannesburg, uh, South Africa. That one sounds like a good one. And that one's that one's put on by DMG Events, which is the parent company of PPCJ and APCJ. Friends of the Podcast. Yes, sir. -y. The 21st through 23rd of June 2022 is Abrafati. That one's been pushed back quite a few times, but that's Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's the big, big, um, you know, it's basically the ACS for Latin America. Uh, it's their big coding show. Yeah, and you can catch the Astro Powder Q&A in print. Yes, yes, my friends, there are still print printed uh, magazines and journals um, becoming a dying breed, but you can find it in print and also on the websites of the aforementioned PPCJ, Polymers, Paint, and Color Journal. So you can get it there. And Paint and Coatings Industry Magazine will be running it in 2022. Uh, they also have it on their Finishing Flash tab. I think it's called Blogs. Um, I was there recently, but uh, Paint and Coatings Industry Magazine uh, features it as well. And you can find us online at askjoepowder.com. And if you want to know every time a new episode drops, um, just subscribe to it. On We're on all of the podcast directories and all the podcast uh, services that you can find. Uh, follow us on Twitter, a.k.a. Joe Powder. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're putting all the episodes up there now if you prefer to get your podcast that way. And we'll also be putting instructional videos and our um, interviews are going to, you know, be put on the YouTube channel with uh, with video. The other thing I should mention is we have a Powder Coating Kitchen Fundamentals of Powder Formulating scheduled for March 2nd and 3rd, 2022. So mark your calendars. All right. And if you want to ask a question, the email address is askjoepowder at yahoo.com. Or you can call and leave a message at country code one four seven eight to ask Joe. It's 1-478-227-5563. This has been a production of ChemQuest Powder Coating Research. Our music editing and all those silly sound effects are done by Nick Page. And this episode was brought to you by an American beverage that won a ribbon in 1893 and they still won't stop bragging about it. <laughs> and keep your powder dry, my friends.
Thank you for listening to the Astro Powder Podcast. This episode was brought to you by Gama. Synchronized monitoring and control of your entire automated process is the core of Gama's Magic Control 4.0 data management systems, with options like line management, offering deeper insight into productivity and consumption, or energy management, allowing you to monitor and save both energy and air consumption, or batch management, offering tracking of powder used to coat production batches. Gama provides the very best in technology and connectivity for smarter factory automation. To learn more about Gama's Magic Control 4.0 data management systems, visit completeitwithgama.com. When you want to know that everything is covered, complete it with Gama. Nathan Spiro Agnew, are you a crook? <laughs> oh, <I am laughs> not a crook. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I guess that positions Brexville as the uh, powder coating R and D um, capital of the world. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> Nick can edit that out. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, friends. Now it's time for our question.